Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. We are from Group One. We will present about ethnomathematics in America. Here our member. The first is Nazun Solihanurin, and the second Anifa Mirzalia Diani, and the third Reza Nur Fitrianto. Let's begin with the presentation. Now I will explain the article with the title is Performative Power in Native America Paul Wilkinson. It's by N X Men, two thousand and one. Power dancing is a celebration of life and community gathering that allows family and friends to get together and share the Native American cultural traditions. Throughout the United States and Canada, people go to Native American intertribal powwows at powwows women, men, and children as a cute rhythmic movement drumming and song as they experience and express sensory stimuli. The aroma of sage in cans profits as Indians and non-Indians socialize, share, fry bread and sell, buy or window shop at concession stands. Vendors display dessert, fur, turquoise, silver and beauty jewelry, as well as artwork, CDs and Ecuadorian and Peruvian items. All participants enjoy storytelling, comedic skits, Indian raps, and country music performances and Mexican Aztec dance presentation alongside rituals such as giveaways, the eagle ceremony, or the veterans dance. When powwow dancers perform, they move between human and spirit worlds, magic resides in the dances and the generative networks and force relations that are repeatedly created and recreated at intertribal powwows each year. From north to south, east to west, powwows most often held outdoor, on reservations and in parks are usually organized around an open circle area surrounded by concession stands. The dancing around the circle represents the cycle of life and its ongoing connection to all things in this world. Most often, the dancers move in the clockwise motion around the circle and to follow the direction of the sun. As Indian dance, the black air calls the power of the world is evident and in the circularity of power, harness that frame the dancers. In this way, the power that Black Elk lamented is not in us anymore. It's present as moving bodies actively assert, uh, specifically Indian performatively through choreographic styles. There are several different dance styles, some for male dancers and others for female dancers. The male dance styles are fancy, grass, Perry, chicken, and traditional. The female dance styles are fancy, jingle, and traditional. And in this article, it explained the men's grass dance. In the grass dance, male dancers bend and twist sideways and backward in full body, flowing swift of weight. With next bend, their three-dimensional movement is parted by a teetering white stance. In the arena, Grass dancers sway and bob in constant even rhythm. The French brooch headdresses and bells distinguish the young, specifically fit grass dancers as they perform hops on one foot while the other taps front, back, front, back, lift the same leg with taps and circles around themselves. Headdresses spin and bells jingle in turn with a drum while the colorful fringe hanging from the shoulders, waist, and apron moves with hypnotic lightness. The grass dance and other power dance styles emerge from real life, ritual, and social practices across time, geographical regions, and tribal groups. In Emeros, diverse explanation of power history, a phenomenon referred to as Irska fire power, prevails in our civil descriptions, our witness account, and temporary power narratives. Broadly speaking, Irska means a kind of fire power. As French moved side to side, letter shift coupled with openings and closing of the torso, produced a mesmerizing effect. 
which have all the legs firmly planted on the ground, dancers switch diagonally across their bodies on several levels on the vertical while lowering the pelvis downward by twists and punches. In intimate contact with the earth, strength travels up through the dancers' feet. Cross dancers also use the space behind themselves as they bend their elbows backward and back or shake their lower backs, replicating animal movement. This unusual use of the space behind the body as well as the use of circular arenas mentioned above related to the concept in Native American cultures that the past, present, and the future are interrelated. Reinforcing the senses of circular time in space, many power dances move clockwise around the arena. In the crest dance, however, the flow patterns seem haphazard, not systematic. Unity between the dancers is expressed, rather, in the swaying fringe and drum song. Often to dance with others is to experience a shared spirituality. Power dance are not solos. They are performed with others in relation to the drum and often as worship to a higher spiritual being. The circular space of the arena is shared, negotiated, and during competition becomes a site of past colonial warfare against the injustice still experienced today by Native Americans. In order to compete at powers, dancers register beforehand, usually offering proof of their Indian identity. This identity is sometimes based on the visually imposed blood quantum. As the arena program begins, the tiny toots are usually the first to perform after the grand entry, initial ceremonies, and opening enter tribal. In the tiny toots category, children venture into the wide open space to dance the initial moves of fancy shawl, cross, jingle, or other choreography. During the tiny toots dance, MCs remind us that Indian people make decisions in relation to the seventh generation, not the presence. Children and their children and grandchildren and great grandchildren are in consideration in community life. In later years, Tiny Toots will perform adults' choreographic styles as moving bodies transfer Iruskal via power through sensory and social memory. Over a grandparent, parent or older friend teaches a young child as soon as she or he can walk. This is the picture of Tiny Toots. And then the next styles is women's styles and in this article it will ex be explained women's jingle dance. Jingle dance jingle dress dancers usually wear a minimum of two hundred jingles that's made with chowing tobacco lids, although they are also sold ready made at power concession stands. Shown in ro rose or zigzag chevron designs across a colorful fitted cloth dress. As dancers move, jingle, their jingles also move up and down or side to side, depending on which way their bodies respond to the drum. When jingle dress dancers perform at night, the flute lights gleam on the shiny metal surface of the trinkets as the dancers bounce, sways, and sing. The picture in the left is the picture of jingle dress dancers. In the strides or jingle dress songs, dancers move more fully in space while gazing inward and downward toward the floor. Even within a narrow, tight stance, this stance is free and lively. The footwork combines short steps up on the toes as the legs cross and open, steps forward and backward, and hops together either sideways, forwards, and especially backward. As in the cross dance, a use of black space prevails as performers make circles around themselves to the right and left. I have also observed some tiny twists of the feet as pillars ripple up the body. Said an X-Man in his article. So the ethnomathematics here is the using of concept of circle of the arena and the pattern of the dance. Okay, I'm going to explain an article that related to ethnomathematics in Native American. A researcher, Ron Ekelesh, conducted an article that related to ethnomathematics in Native American with the title, Native American Analogues to the Cartesian Coordinate System. 
There are some discussion in this article, such as avoiding essentialism, Native American analogs of the Cartesian grid, the Cartesian coordinate system in contemporary Native American design, the virtual bid loom, learning strategies VBL, and others. And this article commonly talk about fourfold symmetry in Native American design. But our focus is only into discussion that talk about the application of Cartesian coordinate in their culture. Then Native American analogs to the Cartesian grid. Navajo Saint painting. Navajo Saint painting is used in healing ceremonies. Medicine man Hatali completes the drawing in one day, then passed away later that night along with the illness. Some of the structures are similar to a Cartesian graph. Figures on the horizontal axis are hunched over with backpacks. Those on the vertical axis have straight backs. Navajo tradition doesn't permit photos of scene paintings, so figure 1 was derived from a Navajo rug based on the scene painting. And for figure 2, Rug as Cartesian graph. Then next, the second example of Native American analogs to the Cartesian grid, Yupik parka. In the Yupik culture, parka is the most common Yupik clothing for survival in the cold climate of Alaska that's created with symmetric decorations. See at figure 3. Yupik say it's important to have both sides looking exactly the same. So, they developed a coordinate system measuring vertical and horizontal distance on the parka using the width of two fingers as the unit of length. See at figure 4. These decorations are positioned by using the navel as the origin point. In other words, it's a quantitative Cartesian graph. This is figure of Yupik Parka construction where the navel as the origin point. The next is Cartesian coordinate system in contemporary Native American design. Contemporary Native American use of two axis system hasn't only continued these traditions but applied them to attract schemata. The flags of many tribes in American symbolized by fourfold symmetry. This is the flag of Oklala Sioux, one of the tribes in Native American. And this is Northern Cheyenne, and this is the flag of South River Pima Maricopa. And for the next is ethnomathematics in art. Art is defined by the culture creating it ranging from the ornamentation of utilitarian objects to decorative items for trade or sales and to artifacts created for sacred rituals. Art can be an expression of identify representing multiple social dimensions of cultural community, a collective unity, an exclusive elite, or an individual rebel. An examination of any cultures shows that the creation of art can often convey a sense of the people, their tradition, and their values, even just by image alone. In many Native American cultures, even items of daily use were artistically decorated or designed to describe personal and collective ownership, membership, and representation. Artful items were seldom duplicated as the artifact was often seen as very personal and in some cases sacred or at least spiritually representative of the relationship between seen and unseen forces and entities. Many interpretations are created by art. These differing interpretations of art are shared to provoke the reader into questioning their own perspective and relationship with art, math, and technology so they may better understand the purpose and necessity of teaching math from a different perspective, namely one that incorporates more fully the cultures and the communities of those they teach.
the role of context and culture is vital in helping define how a teacher makes their instruction purposeful and meaningful for their learners. But, for many students from native and non-native communities alike, mathematics reflect more of a spectator sport, one to be watched from the sidelines rather than an experience in which one engagement both illustrates the way their community shapes and is shaped by their involvement. The use of cultural references and examples in mathematics classroom increase as teachers begin to see the value of framing the mathematics they teach in a context in which the students are familiar. Such integration work to validate local knowledge and mathematical application implemented within the students' community that are typically omitted from curricular inclusion. When students are not allowed or encouraged to co-construct mathematical knowledge, they run the risk of discounting who they are and what they know. Furthermore, they may grow to lose interest in learning mathematics or question their ability to being successful in using mathematical skills. Culturally Situated Use of Technology Mathematics and technology have been present in Native American cultures since long before European context. We will describe the technological aspect of this traditional art, beadwork for example, as the pixel-based display of its era, and show how some of the same mathematical challenges that are encountered by contemporary engineers were engaged by Native artisans. The examples of culturally situated design tools are beadwork, worm foam, and navajo rock weaving. The culturally situated design tool project has developed computer simulation for indigenous art. One of the design tool project is Virtual Bit Looms or VBL. VBL is a simulation design tool that can help students to learn mathematics through experimentation with this knowledge system. The cultural background serves the examples of four-fold symmetry in Native American design. It describes how four-fold symmetry is a deep design theme in many Native American cultures and is evident not only in a wide variety of Native art but also indigenous knowledge systems such as base for dancing, for quadrant architecture, and the four generation healing practice. The VBL applet features a Cartesian workspace in which design are created and tools which appear to the right of the workspace in figure 1. Students enter the XY coordinate pair, select a bit color, and press the grid button. Other tools include lines, rectangles, and triangles and iterative patterns. The tools can be used in combination to simulate traditional beadwork patterns to allow students to create their own design and to inject in a variety or specific standard-based math learning exercises. Teachers have found a wide variety of concepts and skills, primarily from analytic geometry that can be tough using the VBL. Another exciting aspect is the ability of students to develop physical bit work based on their virtual design in Figure 2, often by linking an art class with the math class. A wide variety of mathematics learning strategies can be approached through the VBL. However, some of the most interesting results have been cultural. In one exercise involving a mixed age group from the Soson Panic Reservation School, we found that older children tend to produce designs that more closely resemble traditional beadwork patterns, and younger children created more playful design. This was consistent across two design tools, the VBL and a basket simulation. The age difference might have been due to the context of a science summer camp, in which the older students were constantly asked to set an example for the younger. But it also matches research that suggests that minority ethnic or racial self-identity makes a dramatic shift in this age range. The Navajora Weaver We see that the wave alternates up and down, see the blue highlights in the figure, because every other strand goes in back of the warp, and in draw above it, 
the alternation is the opposite, with every other strand going in front of the warp. Since an important part of the weaving process compresses the rows together, the weaver pushes down with comb. The gaps where the weft goes behind from each row above and below are filled, thus producing an up and down alternation. Thus, we couldn't simply map each individual wave to integer intersection on a Cartesian grid. One alternative was to simply map the wave into non-integer spaces between the grid intersection, but that would destroy much of its utility for the math teacher. The solution was to simulate using two steps. First, the user maps out a wave pattern using only the grid intersection. And the second, the user presses a comb icon and the applet fills in the gaps, thus creating a complete wave simulation. Like the bit loom, the computational aspect of weaving predates Europeans in defacing a particular slope. For example, both weaver and bit workers alike will use a particular algorithm. Over 1 up 2 for a step slope, over 1 up 1 for a more shallow slope, and the others. However, this seemed to be more intense in the case of rough work, since weaver needed to keep track of many different color of threads simultaneously and thus develop counting patterns for particularly complex weavers. Okay, that's all for our group. We do apologize in our mistake. Thank you. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.